I choose the supplements I take very carefully after considering their risks and benefits, and I wasn't sure about glycine, but there's one impact that we've seen over and over again in the studies that convinced me to start taking it. So we'll walk through those studies, plus have a look at some of the other promising health benefits of glycine. And please remember, just because I take a supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. Now, one of the more tantalizing discoveries with glycine is its connection to lifespan. So researchers have discovered that diets low in methionine can extend the lifespan of rodents, and methionine Methionine is an amino acid, one of the building blocks of protein, but when it's broken down in the body, one of the products is another amino acid called homocysteine. And when homocysteine levels are too high, that correlates with increased risks of certain health problems like heart disease. And this is where glycine comes in. It appears to reduce the toxic effects of having too much methionine in mice. So this sparked an idea for scientists to explore. Maybe by boosting the intake of glycine, it can have a similar impact on longevity, as does reducing the consumption of methionine. Research was carried out through the Interventions Testing Program. This is a really important program that runs the same experiment at three separate labs at the same time, so we can see if the results are true and reproducible. So they tested the effects of supplementing with glycine in mice, and the results were really encouraging. Glycine led to a small but statistically significant lifespan increase of 4 to 6% on average across the three independent testing sites. And though this is an area of ongoing research, it looks like there are at least two mechanisms involved here. So the first one we already mentioned, glycine helps to counteract too much methionine, and it seems to be involved in breaking down and clearing it from the body. But the evidence also suggests that glycine can activate autophagy. So autophagy is the process where our cells break down and remove damaged or worn out parts. It's a bit like a trash collector for a city. It's a crucial process that helps to maintain cellular health. But though these results are exciting, we we are definitely not mice. We don't yet know if supplementing with glycine can extend lifespan in humans. But we do have some data that reveals positive health impacts in several important areas. And after taking a look at these, I'll explain why I personally take glycine. So let's start with a fuller picture of what glycine does in the body. So as I already mentioned, it's an amino acid that helps to build proteins. It's one of the key ingredients in collagen, one of the most abundant proteins in the body. But it's also part in other important molecules that contribute to muscle function, oxygen transport, in the blood, protection against oxidative stress, and fat digestion. Glycine also helps to regulate blood sugar and the immune response. It plays a role in removing toxins, and it helps to control nerve signals. So despite being involved in so many important functions, glycine isn't considered an essential amino acid. That's because our bodies can make it. But the evidence suggests that we probably need to get glycine from our diets to have enough. So what are some of the potential benefits of boosting our intake? Well, there are two areas where we presently have plenty of compelling evidence. The first is sleep. So a small double-blind study published in 2006 looked at the impact of glycine supplements on sleep quality. They recruited people who reported having trouble with sleep. So before bed, participants took either a placebo or glycine, and then they completed a questionnaire the next day that asked them about how they slept and how they felt. Glycine supplements significantly improved their ratings of liveliness and clear headedness. It also reduced their feelings of fatigue. A similar study took a deeper look. Here the researchers took measurements during sleep in addition to asking participants how they felt, and the effects of glycine showed up in several areas. So those who took supplements reported experiencing better sleep. They were also less sleepy during the day, but it's the objective measures that are really interesting and back up these impressions. So people fell asleep and reached deep sleep faster. They also performed better on memory tests the next day. And I want to highlight something that the monitoring equipment allowed the researchers to see. Glycine didn't change sleep architecture, so this means that the normal pattern of sleep stages wasn't upset and that's important because many common medications that help people fall asleep, they disrupt our sleep patterns. And this can leave us feeling groggy and not alert the next day. So this means that glycine gives us some of the benefits of traditional sleeping medications that promote sleep without the side effects. The third study was similar. In this case, however, participants had their normal sleep reduced by by 25% for three nights in a row while they took glycine supplements or the placebo, and the researchers measured daytime sleepiness and performance. Those who took glycine had reduced fatigue and sleepiness. So what's going on here? Why does glycine help with sleep? Well, a separate rodent study indicated that it seems to work by influencing the biological clocks in our brain. So this clock is responsible for our circadian rhythm, the pattern of day and night that affects multiple body systems. Specifically, they found that glycine triggers increased blood flow to the skin, which helps to cool us down, and this is a normal part of falling asleep. It's one of the reasons why taking a bath or a shower before bed is a good idea. So the shower, it raises our body temperature, and then when we get 
out of the shower, our body temperature plummets and it's that change in temperature that signals to our body that it's time to fall asleep. And because of glycine's effects on sleep, it's one of the three ingredients in my new sleep supplement. But again, just because I take a supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. But there's a second area where we've got good evidence for glycine's benefits, and it relates to metabolic health. So this is our body's ability to efficiently process, store and use energy from the foods we eat. For instance, one small study tested glycine in individuals with higher risks of developing type 2 diabetes, and it found that glycine boosted the amount of insulin produced after a meal and and therefore helps us process food more efficiently. Two other studies relate to preventing damage when our metabolic health is out of balance, so conditions like obesity and diabetes creates oxidative stress and inflammation, both of which can lead to significant harm with time. And one study looked at the effects of glycine supplements in those with metabolic syndrome. So in one of the studies, participants got a glycine supplement or a placebo every day for three months. Researchers measured several markers of oxidative stress, so again this is the damage caused by free radicals. They also looked to see how glycine affected the presence of antioxidants, so these are the molecules that neutralize the free radicals. Researchers discovered that glycine helped the oxidative stress overall in these patients went down, and this makes sense as glycine is one of the three building blocks of a powerful antioxidant called glutathione. And interestingly, blood pressure also fell for the men in the treatment group, which is fantastic for heart health. Next, they looked at inflammation. The researchers wondered about the effects of glycine in patients with obesity and type 2 diabetes. Both of these conditions often involve chronic, low-level inflammation. Besides the benefits for sleep and metabolic health, there was promising research pointing to further effects of glycine, and we'll quickly look at two before considering the right dose for glycine supplements. We've already seen that one study found that glycine supplements slightly lowered blood pressure, and researchers have been looking more deeply at the connection with heart health. One large analysis examined a group of over 4,000 patients with suspected heart disease. Over a follow-up period of about seven years, they looked at the association between glycine levels in the blood and heart attacks. There was an inverse relationship, so the lower a person's glycine levels, the more likely a heart attack was. But cohort studies, they just establish association. That still leaves the question of causation. So is glycine driving better heart health, and if so, how? Well, one interesting analysis looked at these questions through genetics. So here's what the researchers did. They took a massive genetic database and found that people with genetic variants that were associated with higher levels of glycine, they checked to see if those people also had better heart health outcomes, and they did. So this gave them reason to think that higher glycine was causing the outcomes. And then there's glycine's impact on the brain. So glycine is like a key that helps to unlock a special door in the brain called the NMDA receptor. So this door only opens when two keys are used at the same time. One of them is glycine and the other one is a chemical called glutamate. When both keys fit, this opens the door to important processes like memory and learning. And there are certain problems in the brain linked to poor function of the NMDA receptors. So one of them is schizophrenia. Researchers in one study found that patients with schizophrenia had low levels of glycine compared to the control group. The same was true for patients who had major depression. So to explore this idea further, a small study was done that found that adding high-dose glycine to standard treatments for schizophrenia resulted in a 23% reduction in negative symptoms. And that's just one example of the multiple areas where glycine is showing promise for our health. So how much glycine do we need? Well, as noted, our bodies can make it, but it appears that we need to get more from our diet to reach the right amounts. So many studies, like the ones on sleep, they used a daily dose of 3 grams, and authors of a recent review article recommended an intake of about 1.5 to 3 grams per day to meet our needs. Glycine is found naturally in certain foods, and the best sources are animal products, particularly in tissues that have a lot of collagen, like skin. You might also find it in legumes, nuts, and seeds. So why do I personally take glycine as part of my sleep supplement? Well, when I was looking through the research, obviously there's the stuff about sleep, but when you have a look at supplementing for other areas of our health, the results, while they're preliminary, they are compelling. But that's why I always look at the potential benefits versus the risks. So when it comes to glycine, there's a very good safety profile. It's categorized as generally recognized as safe by the FDA, and the studies looking at supplements don't report any worrying adverse effects. Plus, it's an amino acid that our bodies already make and we get in our diet every day. So in other words, the evidence says that supplementing with glycine is generally safe at typical doses in the range of about 3 grams per day, and it has some fairly well-established benefits, particularly when it comes to sleep. So to me, it made total sense to include it in the sleep supplement. 
And there's another amino acid that I'd place in the same category, and some scientists are even calling it the youth molecule. So make sure to check out this next video here to find out what it is and the exciting research that's helping to clarify its potential impact on our health.